So it's been a few weeks since Grand Blue Fantasy Relink launched on Steam, and it's gotten a lot of positive attention since then, with over 20,000 very positive reviews, and even having some big content creators like Asmigul playing it. Can I get that sword? You are unworthy. Oh, I guess probably not then. Hell, even some of my close streaming buddies from the Monster Hunter community on Twitch all play the game, and have positive things to say about it. The only reason I'm not playing it is because I just bought Pal World and Helldivers 2, and Last Epoch comes out this month, so I just don't really have the time. But I'm sure the release came as a surprise for many, wondering where the heck this game even came from. Well, let's talk about it, and why I think this game's success is so significant for the gaming industry as a whole. Grand Blue Fantasy was originally a mobile gacha RPG by the company Psy Games, which was hugely successful in Japan, but seems rather unknown still in the West, which is why a lot of people here don't know about it. In 2019, they released a fighting game called the Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, starring many of the characters from the original game's gacha system, so it was a great way to celebrate their popular characters and give players a brand new way to interact with them in a whole new genre and format. That's why you will often see people in Twitch chat asking, is this a fighting game? When someone is playing Relink, because they only ever heard about the fighting game. Probably because of all the people raging about this little OP bitch with the big ass sword. I swear, every time I watch someone play this game on stream, and they're fighting her, they are having a bad time. Anyways, what about Relink? It isn't a fighting game or a gacha game. It's completely different from both as an action RPG similar to games like the Tales of series, but with boss fights that have crazy mechanics you would find in a game like Monster Hunter, and the ability to combo chain abilities for ultimate attacks you would see in a typical modern character action game. I mean, just look at this first boss, man. It's literally bipedal Tyrex with a horn. It seems to me like Psy Games is trying to use the profits from the original gacha game to branch out and evolve Grand Blue Fantasy as an IP by making games of different genres while reusing the most interesting aspects of their world in the characters that fans love, instead of just rehashing a new gacha RPG for mobile. In fact, on their own website, they even have this section called Maximizing the Potential of Psy Games' Existing IPs. Where they discuss the concept of exactly that idea and bringing new life into their grand blue fantasy ip with each new game as well as other old ips that they've done in the past personally i think this is fantastic the concept of creating new games in all different kinds of genres based on one older successful ip is something that as a fan of blizzard games i've always wanted from something like starcraft and diablo and even warcraft it's like they stopped at the mmo and said yeah, that's enough innovation for us. Shut everything else down. I think the whole premise of games companies using their popular IPs to create new games in different genres while staying true to their game is pretty rare, at least done successfully. The only ones that I can think of in recent years that have evolved their IPs in this way is something like Persona, with the fighting games and striker spin-offs. But even then, they remain somewhat niche in their player bases. Like, personally, I only really play the main series. Surprisingly, we see successful formats of this being done by indie developers like Hapu Games with Risk of Rain 2, evolving from the original being a 2D side-scroller roguelike, but then completely changing this perspective to a third-person shooter-style roguelike in 3D, but still using the same well-loved and established characters. Another game that has done something similar is actually Helldivers. I played the original game on PlayStation 4 because it came with PlayStation Plus at some point, and it was a fantastic game back then. But it was a lot more niche due to being a top-down isometric style shooter that felt a lot more arcadey. But for the sequel, they completely changed the format of the game to a third-person 3D shooter with better graphical fidelity than we see in a lot of modern indie titles. With third-person perspective, with the ability to change to first-person when aiming down the sights, as well as tons of other amazing quality-of-life features, immersive elements, and a massively multiplayer events. But I could go on all day about Helldivers 2, so we'll save that for another video. Back to the topic at hand though, I'm just so amazed to see a company that started out making a gacha game actually branching out and not just releasing gacha game after gacha game like other companies do. Now that's not me handing on companies like Hoyoverse. It's clear that it's very successful and very profitable format, so don't blame them for making games like Honkai Star Rail and Zenless Zone Zero after Genshin's success. But what I am trying to point out is that Psy Games has shown us that it is possible to make profitable, successful games of a non-gacha format, and it is so refreshing to see it happen to this extent. 
I'm hoping that this will at least inspire other studios to rethink the way they see profitable games instead of always having live service or gacha games. They can create a successful, well-made, and well-optimized games in totally different genres, even of single-player variety. As a final point, I think that what these studios are doing is extremely good for the gaming industry as a whole. I'm excited to see where these titles go in the future. And thanks to Pesty the Bestie from Twitch.tv for all the video clips from Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. This is all his footage, so go check him out. Give him a follow. Thanks. Let me know your thoughts on the topic and if you agree with me in the comments below. And leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. In fact, if we hit 100 likes on this video, I will purchase Relink and play through it myself on my Twitch stream. Twitch.tv slash Rathanu. Later. I beat the whole fucking game without armor. <laughs> uh.